back to the International Sports Report on TSN and Team Radio Networks. Joining me is Mike Chu out in Victoria. Mike Chu is the uh, general manager of uh, Rugby Canada and also the high performance. Uh, you're responsible for a big job, isn't it, uh, Mike, that you're responsible really for the future of rugby in Canada? Oh, don't say that. That's, uh, that's keeping the pressure on, isn't it? <laughs> that's yeah, why you get... a big job, and um, I've actually uh, carved a chunk off, and we've, uh, we've employed a high-performance manager, Steve Lancaster, who used to work with the Crusaders in New Zealand, uh, one of the most successful franchises in world rugby. So he joined us in January of this year, so that's going to, uh, that's going to really help uh, move us forward. Yeah, and Lancaster, I mean, he, he must have worked with, what, Robbie Deans in that era of uh, can Crusaders being so dominant in Super 15? Yes, he did. He, uh, he was actually a player for the Crusaders and won three Super Rugby titles with them before working with New Zealand Rugby and then mm. back to the Crusaders as their high performance manager. So really okay. good, strong rugby pedigree. Yeah, I'd like to meet him. I'm, I'm originally from Croatia, so I used to play for Linwood. Oh, no, it's a small place down there. Yeah, there, small, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let's uh, chat about um, the job that you're doing and uh, where you started. Um, you came from New Zealand. You were working uh, for the New Zealand Rugby Union. And uh, well, what's um, some of the achievements and also um, the disappointments that you've had so far, or has it all been achievements? Oh, look, there's, there's been a... a, a ton of achievements you know one of the highlights has got to be the establishment of the um, center of excellence here in Langford so it really does give us a home um, that we can you know train good gym good fields and um, and a good good office block etc so it really has given a home to our, um, our our rugby family out here lots of achievements on the sevens front so you might know that we've got um own the podium support for both our men's and women's sevens teams now um on the back of some very good performances so our women last year i think they had five top three finishes in international tournaments our men um have had their most successful campaign ever with three top six finishes um and we went through the stats the other day and in the last two years New Zealand is the only team on the circuit that we haven't beaten. So, you know, both teams are performing pretty well. Now, and of course, um, you've got to get into the top 12 for the men's side to uh, go to the Olympics. Is that correct? Um, yes, that's right. Although, with the Olympics for both our men and women, uh, NACRA, which is North America, Caribbean, that's our, that's our, I guess, our pool. And effectively, we have to beat the USA in order to get to the Olympics. Um, and then with a 12-team 12 12 team tournament at the Olympics, you know, you win one game in your pool and you're into the uh, quarterfinals and then anything can happen. So we're, we're hopeful of being at the Olympics and, um, and giving, giving that podium a good nudge. Have, do you have a concern, because I've heard it from um, a few of our listeners that have emailed in that... Um, how popular the sevens are because uh, the famous Hong Kong sevens but here they are in the Olympics um, you've got the worlds coming up for the women and the men in Russia um, do you have a concern that sevens is going to take over from the 15 game? Um, yes and no I mean I, I think Canada's got a very mature 15 system already in place and I think we really need to make sure that that remains strong because 90% 90, 90 of our players are going to come from the 15s game, if not more. So, uh, yes, we'll be looking for talent transfer athletes from other sports, but we need to have a strong 15s game that we can build our 7s game off as opposed to just focusing on 7s. I'm talking to Mike Chu, the uh, General Manager of Rugby Operations uh, out in, and Performance in uh, Victoria for Rugby Canada. Mike... Um, the sevens. Uh, what have we got coming up? We have got uh, uh, the Netherlands, uh, the and then on to the worlds. Uh, yes. So uh, both our men's and women's sevens team are, are preparing for tournaments coming up. Our men are going to Glasgow. Uh, we need to have a strong finish there to remain a core team for next year. They go from Glasgow to London, and then our women are actually going to London. They'll be at the same tournament as the men and then they'll kick on and go to the Netherlands. So both teams have got two tournaments between now and the World Cup at the end of June. So it's busy times. Um, and in, in between that, we've got a very, very busy 15s program for our men. We've got, um, we've got the Pacific Nations Cup, so we play Fiji, Tonga, USA, 
Um, and then we also have Ireland in there, which will be a big test, at BMO Field in Toronto. And then we fly straight after that game, so that's on Saturday the 15th of June. Straight after that we fly to Japan and play Japan on the Wednesday. Yeah, Nations Cup, season. I mean, talk about the... Uh, um uh, Crowley will need a uh, rest, won't he, after all this? And sleep on the plane. No, sleep on the plane. <laughs> but um, what about the 15 game uh, for the men in the future? And, I mean, you, you've got the 2015 World Cup in, in London, England, and then the, the next World Cup, because uh, uh, the qualifying, as you just mentioned, that uh, against the USA side this year, and um, it, you seem pretty confident I think Rugby Canada of qualifying for the World Cup in 2015 what happens after that um, the yeah, play, look, players build, uh, players are, for the future yeah. I mean I think um, I think Kieran's doing a, a fabulous job of um, of squeezing the most that we can squeeze out of our current resources so but we need to look at the future and we need to say you know 2019 uh, we need to be identifying and developing those players right now um, to, to be ready for 2019. We don't have an uh, we don't have a professional league for our players, and ideally that would be something that would happen in North America, so our players could you know train and play like professionals. But in the meantime, you know one of our strategies is to push some of our players into overseas clubs so they can get that um, get that, that daily training environment and you know good yeah. games week in week out. Now, the key to it, when you look at the world rugby stage, a lot of the players are huge. They're tall, they're um, big boys, and uh, in other countries, they're developing that era. And how do you feel about that? How does Canadian rugby get the big second rowers and, um, and, and big wingers like we see that England can do so well? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a good question. We, we need to look at some uh, you know, talent transfer and identifying these big guys early we've done a lot of trend analysis the game is getting bigger faster stronger with our sevens we've got a very big sevens team um and a lot of credit to our strength and conditioning guys who have sort of bulked our players up but we do lack that sort of you know a a ton of six foot eight guys or you know um 200 plus pound guys that uh, your front rowers so we need to find some of them and that's actually both in the men and the women's game um you know, our, our women's 15s have also got a, a strong campaign coming up this year leading into World Cup next year. So lots happening for them too. And the women are ranked in the world uh, fifth place. Is that correct? That's right. Um, and our women's 15, we've just appointed um, a head coach for that program, Francois Rackier uh, from Quebec. And so they've got a number of games this year against England, South Africa, USA and France. So we're... we're putting in place a good program for them to build them up towards the World Cup next year. So, Mikey, you enjoying the job and um, enjoying the challenges that come with it? Yeah, loving it. There's um, there's lots of challenges, um, as with any role like this, but uh, look, fantastic people to work with. Our, our players are, are truly inspiring what they achieve on um, on so little and like, loving the job. Family's loving it here and uh, it's a beautiful place. OK, Mike, thanks for being on the program and of uh, course we'll um, keep an eye on those internationals the home series so um, if people go to rugbycanada.ca they'll get all the information of uh, USA playing Canada and uh, Edmonton and also uh, Toronto for World Cup qualifying but also Ireland coming to BMO on uh, the 15th of June so that's going to be a great international thanks, great, thank you thanks Mike that's Mike Chu, general manager of Rugby Operations and Performance for Rugby Canada based out in Victoria.